Hello and welcome to this lecture on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte, I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Bombay. So, uh, in the previous lecture, we had uh, done a lot of discussion about shared resources and queues. We had uh, discussed that uh, delays uh, are basically a result of contention for shared resources and we had discussed that uh, resources in computers and networks include things like uh, network links, uh, web server threads, CPU um, and we had also made a list of uh, pairs of resources and their user or customer entity. Okay, remember that user here is the entity to which the resource is directly given. Um, so, we humans are of course the original users of everything, but uh, when we say users we mean the direct entity that is scheduled, so the schedulable entity. Uh, so, for CPU it is threads, for cellular network channels it is calls, we had gone all of this through the previous lecture. For the wireless medium it is frames, for the link it will be packets and so on. Um, and we left off uh, discussing that uh, performance as we defined it in the last lecture which is uh, basically how well something functions given that it is functioning. Um, that performance uh, is something that we can talk about. We left off asking that can we be a little specific, can we say something more about these resource and users other than uh, it is slow or it is fast. Okay? So, um, again uh, this is a reminder to have a pen and paper ready uh, because uh, it will be good if you also write some thoughts down there as I ask. So, before we uh, get into discussing more parameters and metrics, uh, let us define it very clearly. Okay? So, um, metric is the attribute by which uh, is a quantitative uh, attribute by which we describe uh, some quality of the system. Okay? So, it is a it is a quantity for describing some quality. Okay? So, for example, you might say that this person is very fast, he runs, you can just say this person is very fast that is just a qualitative attribute right. What is the metric? Then uh, you can you will have to say that this person runs uh, uh, you know um, uh, 1 kilometer in I do not know 5 minutes or 3 minutes or something like that uh, or somebody is uh, if you say this person is very strong that is a qualitative metric. Then how many kilograms can they lift? Is it uh, 50 kg, 100 kg something like that people you know bodybuilders can lift that will be a metric right that this is as many kilos as this person can lift. So, it is a quantity, it is a quantitative me measure for describing some quality and that is metric. Okay? And when the metric, metrics can be for anything, I just told you a metric for a person being fast, a person being strong, uh, a metric to describe a car, uh, recall from the previous lecture, uh, a metric for describing an e efficient car could be how many liters uh, of uh, petrol does it consume, how many uh, uh, kilometers does it give for 1 liter of petrol. That is a very quantitative metric to describe an efficient car. Right? Uh, the metrics that we will talk about are for computer performance of course, computer and network performance. So, that is why we call it a performance metric. Uh, it can be a reliability metric also, remember again from the previous lecture we had reliability or dependability, how many times a car broke down in the last uh, 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 5 years is a, is a reliability metric. But again we will only talk about performance metrics in this class. Now what is a parameter? Uh, a parameter is something uh, about the system or about uh, the, uh, the thing about which whose metric that you are talking about, it is something about that that affects the metric. Okay? So, again recall in the previous lecture we talked about uh, speed of the resource, how many resources, workload intensity, all of these the quantitative versions of this. So, uh, quantifying an influencing factor 
a metric influencing factor. Okay? That is basically a parameter and basically the metric is going to be a function of the parameter. And this is just a, a general graph, this is not any particular metric or any particular parameter, but uh, this is what we are what, what uh, the relationship is, we will generally plot a metric as a function of a parameter. In this case, whatever this metric is, it is increasing in this way as the parameter increases. Okay. So, let us uh, talk about performance metrics. Okay. In, uh, in uh, computer systems and in general also actually. Um, there are two types of metrics, uh, the system metrics and user perceived metrics. So, uh, what are user perceived metrics? Uh, these are actually very easy to uh, think about. These are metrics that are visible and, are, and are, are felt by and are of interest to the user of the resource. For example, uh, the waiting time uh, is something that is felt by the user of the resource. Okay, the, all the previous examples that we gave outside of computer systems and networks, uh, clearly these are um, uh, you know how much time you are waiting at an escalator, how much time uh, you are waiting in a queue, this is something that a person actually experiences. Similarly, in networks uh, and systems, uh, the, the waiting time will be experienced by a packet. Now, the packet is not a person, it will be something that uh, a, the, the network uh, administrator will have to measure uh, and so on, but it is a, a metric that belongs to the packet okay? and, uh, and is indirectly experienced by the human who is sending the packet. Uh, similarly, the uh, you know waiting room is full meaning uh, the packets came to the uh, network buffer, but were dropped. So, they did not even have space to queue. So, that could be this kind of uh, something that the packet will know. If the packet was a person, the packet would know that it was dropped, uh, but uh, at least it is something that the packet has experienced and maybe the sender of the packet will note that the packet was dropped. Uh, so, one way or the other it is something that, the, that it concerns the user. A system metric is something that is uh, visible and of interest to the owner of the resource or the operator of that resource or the resource herself or himself if, if the resource is a person. So, giving the example of the poll booth worker which was a person, how busy they were, you know they were maybe they did not even get a break for, a, for a lunch or something, that is something that will be experienced by the resource itself. Um, if it is a computer or a network link that we are talking about, how busy it is which is called the resource utilization or how many packets per day, how many threads per second is a CPU processing, how many packets per second is a link transferring, all of this is something that the owner of the link uh, or the owner of the CPU, they will know. The person who is submitting a job to the CPU or who has sent packets to be sent on the network link, they will not know in fact, they are done when the, their packet uh, goes over the link, right. Like again giving the example of the poll booth uh, worker, uh, the person who is the voter who is queuing for the, uh, for the poll booth, they will not know how many uh, persons per hour came through this uh, voting station today, right. They only know that I had to wait for 2 hours. The poll booth uh, 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 operator will know how many persons per hour came. Okay? So, these are the system and user metrics and in fact they are often in conflict with each other. Uh, system owners want their resources to be utilized. Now, imagine for example the escalator, if somebody uh, installs some 2-3 escalators and uh, they are not being used, uh, that is a uh, that means you did not estimate the number of people that are going to come to that station or the mall or whatever would be you did not estimate it properly and you put in too many escalators and you are spending so much money. right? So, that is not good. Um, now, uh, so, so uh, system operators often want their systems to be highly utilized, their, uh, their resources to be highly utilized. Uh, users like the resources to be idle so that they do not have much waiting, right. So, there is a bit of a uh, conflict between what a system owner wants and what a, uh, what a user wants. Uh, now, coming to parameters also there are two types, system and workload. Uh, here this is much uh, more straightforward. Uh, as we discussed earlier, a resource has a speed, uh, you know how many 
uh, packets per second can this link carry, what is the bits per second bandwidth of the link, how many links are there or how many CPUs are there, how many poll workers are there, uh, all of these are the uh, parameters. We already discussed that these will actually impact the delay and, and the performance in general. Uh, the sharing policy, we discussed this previously also it is definitely a factor. This is actually a qualitative factor. Uh, this is hard to quantify there is this can this this is a general attribute um, but it is a parameter nonetheless. Uh, but these are all uh, characteristics of the resource right or of the system. Now uh, regardless of this uh, the performance will be influenced by the workload parameters and as discussed earlier workload parameters will be like arrival rate, how many packets per second, how many jobs per second are coming to this uh, resource and each uh, each uh, user how much work are they bringing to the system ok. And uh, so, if, if uh, there is a ticket vendor uh, one person may just want to buy one ticket quickly and go, but the next person might come and they, they might spend a lot of time choosing the seats and so on. So, it is a different amount of workload that came to the ticket vendor right. So, how much unit of work is coming to the resource uh, that, that will also be determining the uh, metric, uh, but it is a uh, it is a workload parameter, it is not the characteristic of the system, it is the characteristic of a user. So, can we name some ok in the uh, instances that we saw for example, for a uh, network link and a packet uh, which is the user, can we name some metrics ok, can you go ahead and write some in your notebook. Uh, for example, for this uh, there can be packet uh, waiting time, in fact it is called queuing delay, how much time did the packet spend in the queue. There can be packet drop probability, ok. Um, then in terms of uh, let us say the web server system. So, this one is of course, this is a user metric, this was also user. So, the link utilization, uh, what fraction of time was the link busy? This is a, uh, a system metric, uh, the web server uh, you know again request response, uh, request delay, okay, how long did it take for the request to finish? This is one metric, uh, then average we can have like average number of busy threads. This can be some metric. What could be a parameter? Parameter could be um, uh, the rate of arrival of requests, right. So, uh, let us go ahead and, and, and look at this whole table that is here of uh, various uh, metrics and parameters. I hope you took some time to think about these things yourself. So, for example, CPU, uh, let us start with the metrics, ok. What is it, what are the questions, what are we interested in? So, the resource owner will like to uh, think in terms of oh, so many jobs per second were done on the CPU. Let us say it is a high performance computing system or in those kind of systems actually these large jobs are actually submitted for processing. And if you are an owner of that kind of system, you will really want to be processing lots of jobs because maybe you have given it for rent uh, to some users and you get more, uh, you, you make more profit if more jobs per second are done by the CPU. So, you really want as a system owner, you always want these things to be high. You want your CPU utilization meaning the percent of time it is busy, you want that to be high otherwise it is a wasted resource. From the user's point of view, of course, you would love it if there is nobody else using the CPU and it is only for you because you would be interested in the job completion time. Uh, what will affect these metrics? Uh, it, it will be affected by the speed of the CPU, the number of cores, these are system parameters, right? The more the cores and the more the speed, of course, you can do more jobs per second. Uh, other lot of very technical things like cache size. Of course, the scheduling policy it is very important in, in terms of uh, some of these metrics. We know for example, that there are some scheduling policies which are better for job completion times, other scheduling policies are, are worse for job completion times. You can recall your operating systems uh, uh, undergraduate material 
and we will discuss this in some other lectures. Um, then there is a workload parameter right each job is bringing how many instructions to the CPU and of course the job arrival rate itself. Um, in uh, cellular channels we have uh, the system operator the cellular own op uh, network owner will be uh, interested in uh, how, what is the let us say in a, in a day at, at uh, between uh, 11 am to 12 noon what is the average number of busy channels. Um, then there is uh, uh, you know call volume what is the calls carried per second, uh, how many calls am I successfully completing every hour for example or every second. Now the user will be interested in the same thing blocking probability, blocking here means network busy. What is the probability that I tried to dial something and I got network busy. The parameters of course uh, will be uh, number of channels. If there are fewer channels then actually you cannot carry that many calls because many people will get network busy. Uh, this is the parameter of the system and uh, then from the users point of view how long are users going on talking on the phone that will directly impact how many calls per hour you can actually carry successfully right you can complete successfully. So, uh, this is for the cellular channels. Uh, for web server threads wireless medium is all very similar uh, you will be interested in requests uh, completed per second, average number of busy time, uh, request response time, uh, connection refuse rate, um, these are the metrics, parameters will be number of threads, scheduling policy, uh, arrival rate, how much time does each request take. Similarly, for the wireless medium, uh, the bandwidth as we say right, uh, sorry, uh, this, this, is the, this is the uh, uh, metric in terms of the performance metric, how many bits per second uh, is this uh, Wi-Fi channel actually successfully carrying per second. That is a very important metric from the system owners point of view. Then what fraction of the time was actually it being used? Otherwise like I said again is it is it a waste? Is it being used? Uh, collision rate recall from your wireless uh, uh, network uh, material that uh, there is something called collisions that can happen on Wi-Fi. So, what is the collision rate? Uh, from the user point of view again it is delays and, and uh, sometimes it can also be how variable is the delay that is also a metric of interest uh, and uh, maybe collision probability for the user also. The parameters will be data rate which we say bandwidth right if the bandwidth is higher uh, the frame transmission delay will be smaller. Uh, then this is very important protocol rules because usage like I said there is a resource sharing policy right whenever there is a resource there is a sharing policy. So, this in, in networking these policies are determined by protocols. Uh, in case of wireless medium there is an access protocol. right? Access protocol. So, how are you going to access the medium because if many laptops are using the same medium there needs to be a, a way to share that medium. So, that will itself be a qualitative parameter and then again we have frame arrival rate and frame size. Uh, in this table uh, by the way the hash sign is for number ok. So, this is number of instructions, number of cores, number of threads and so on. Now, uh, how do we calculate all of these metrics ok. It is uh, you know seems fairly dizzying as to all kinds of metrics are there you know. Uh, before we go into how we may want to ask why should we calculate all of these metrics everything should have a purpose and you should never uh, believe that something should be done just because I am saying in this lecture that it should be done. So, how do we calculate? Why should we calculate? Why is it important that we know all of these metrics ok? Um, and then finally really what is all of this that we are doing ok? Before we ask answer how and why let me just uh, define what this is ok. This material that we are actually talking about just like the name of the course is basically called performance analysis ok. And what is performance analysis? It is a process by which we methodically analyze the performance of a computing or a networking system. What do I mean by analyze the performance? Essentially what we will be doing is we will determine the relationship. Uh, remember I said metric is a function of some parameter. What we want to do in, uh, in essence is to determine this function 
ok. We want to determine the relationship of the performance metric to a system or workload parameter ok. Uh, now that we know what it is that we are talking about, uh, the next question has to be why, why do we need to do this? So there are many reasons ok. Uh, one is uh, sizing, what is sizing? Sizing means being able to determine the number and speed of resources that you need for something. So for a cellular operator for example, uh, the cellular operator may want to know how many channels they should arrange for in a particular cell. For that they may need to estimate how many calls uh, per second they need to actually successfully carry or they may need to estimate uh, that if I only give uh, say 10 channels in this cell then what will be my blocking probability? How many times how frequently will I be giving network busy to my users? If you calculate that then if, if it is too much then you might be able to say that no I should have 10 channels. Uh, similarly setting configuration parameters. What is the configuration parameter? One example is the number of threads a web server should have. This is something that is typically there in a configuration file in the server. Uh, again same thing might happen, I should not have uh, too few threads so that the requests are queuing. I should also not have too many, I, mean, I should not have like 50,000 threads on a 4 core machine because all of you know again from your undergraduate operating system too many threads may cause what is called thrashing right, we can have thrashing. So uh, we need to perfectly set the configuration parameter. Choosing architectural alternatives uh, meaning uh, you can uh, you might have to design a network let us say a campus network somebody is designing, uh, they would need to know uh, what should be the uh, uh, packets per second or the uh, bits per second that the network should carry, what kind of uh, uh, switch architecture, remember we saw a picture of a network and link architecture, what should that architecture be so that my performance is good. Uh, then comparing resource uh, allocation of schedule or scheduling algorithms, this is very important. Uh, I have let us say a, a CPU core and then I have uh, so many threads and processes using it. Uh, again from your undergraduate operating systems you would have learned that there are so many different scheduling policies right. There is shortest job first, uh, there is round robin, all of these will result in different delays and sometimes it can lead to different rates at which jobs are completed also. So um, uh, based on what my uh, I, I, I should be I, I cannot just propose some, some new policy other than these two without doing the performance analysis of it ok. Suppose I have some new idea for a scheduling policy, I cannot say that I think this is going to be good, please use it, you cannot do that, you will have to do a very very formal performance analysis ok. Uh, determining bottlenecks, this is another very interesting thing. When you have multiple resources, multiple types of resources, uh, that are used by any user to actually complete their job. In that case sometimes different resources will see different use. So um, let us say in the network example, I have you know so many switches and these are the links. But this could be the switch uh, to which many links are connected and this is a bottleneck. The switch or the link, this is the link on which lot of packets are coming in and this link becomes the bottleneck. So then uh, I will I need to know that this is the bottleneck and maybe I should put some extra links here and increase or just put another link there with higher bandwidth. So I need to know what my bottleneck of my uh, if I am this network owner this whole network I own then I need to know what my bottleneck is so that I can uh, uh, fix it right. Uh, finally I need to do performance analysis because I may need to give uh, service guarantees uh, which is uh, what is service guarantees? Uh, suppose I am creating a website uh, which I am promising to my customers that the loading time will be um, less than a second or less than half a second. How do I know? Suppose I'm, I have I, I, my customer is actually another business that needs to be very fast and I have a contract with that business that uh, tells that uh, my web, the, their web page should load within a second. So I need to analyze my system right before I can, uh, I can be sure that I am giving that quality. 
So, determining whether service guarantees uh, uh, will be met is the la is the reason another reason. So, how do we do this right? Uh, how can we do this? There are many ways. One is you can just measure if the uh, resource that you are doing this performance analysis for is already operating. You can actually just uh, use some some monitoring logs or or uh, you can actually uh, have some probes and some some programs that are actually measuring the performance of the actual service. Okay. Uh, or you can set it up in a test bed. Uh, so, let us say you were a network operator, you could set up a test network in your own premises and have some uh, laptops and devices on it which are just sending lot of artificial or uh, lot of doing lot of downloads and uploads and while doing all of that you measure the performance using some software. And, and that is why that is how you measure you do lot of measurement and analysis and you, you get done with it. Um, the other the last thing here is uh, the, the other two methods actually are in the category of modeling. Now, what is modeling? Modeling is what you need to do uh, when you do not have the actual system to measure or it is not possible to measure. So, here basically you create an artificial representation of the actual system. There are two ways to model anything, one is by simulation and another is analysis. In simulation uh, you basically write a program, you write a computer program that represents the, the entities within the real system. Uh, so, uh, switches and links and packets are basically represented by data structures and the program logic uh, behaves like packets going from one switch to the other and so on and then you collect statistics and then uh, you are you are able to uh, estimate when you model things you can only estimate the performance uh, so one way to do it is this another way is to uh, use just mathematical reasoning just reasoning and and some probabilistic and mathematical calculations with pen and paper to uh, derive some very uh, good uh, things about the system. Okay. Now, uh, there is a, a bit of a uh, uh, advantage disadvantage relationship between these methods. Uh, so, analytical modeling uh, one of the biggest advantages of it is it can give you some insights because this can sometimes result in some formulae and there is nothing like a little formula that gives you some very uh, very deep insight about the fundamental behavior of a metric with respect to the parameter. Um, so, more insight in this direction of course, uh, analyzing mathematically needs a little more expertise like you will have to do this course before you can analyze these things mathematically. Um, but once the expertise is there actually you can get very quick answers, it is just a formula sometimes you can just plug in some numbers there and you get the answer. Um, as opposed to that measurement requires uh, will rarely give you insights, uh, very deep insights you will have to do lot of you have to plot lot of graphs and everything and only then you will get you will get some insight of course by measurement. But uh, it is a little harder to derive that uh, insight rather than from a formula and simulation is somewhere in the middle. Um, similarly, but measurement uh, gives you complete you know maximum flexibility ok, maximum flexibility in a way because you can set up uh, a very very uh, um, complicated infrastructure and measure it. Uh, if the cost is not a problem right, you can get flexibility, but there will be lot of costs also. Um, and why is there less flexibility with uh, analytical models? It is because uh, analytical models are, are mathematical and uh, they, uh, they need lot of assumptions. Uh, and this will be more realistic and again because mathematical models need to be simple uh, there will they will be less realistic. Okay. So, these are the trade offs of all of these methods. Uh, now, in this uh, course our focus is, uh, is this last method which is analysis with pen and paper with and mathematics and just reasoning. So, just a last closing couple of thoughts. Okay. Um, if I say that I have to use mathematical models to estimate these uh, metrics in terms of these parameters, these are metrics and these are parameters. Um, so, if you want to met, uh, uh, if you want to do this analysis, uh, you may wonder do we have to do it separately for each of these things and then 
hundreds of other resources that are also there in each system. There are different scheduling policies, there are different metrics. Do I have to go through the maths uh, for each of these systems? Uh, so that seems very daunting, right? How do we carry out this analysis? Um, as it turns out, actually you do not have to do this. Okay? Uh, if you stare at this table long enough and these uh, metrics long enough, you will realize that there is a lot of uh, similarity in some essence between all of these things. So for looking at the metrics for example, here I have jobs per second, I have calls carried per second, I have requests completed per second, I have su successful bits per second. Um, in terms of uh, user metrics, I have job completion time, I have request response time, I have waiting time, transmission delay, uh, here I have some collision probability, here I have blocking probability. In terms of parameters, I have job arrival rate, call arrival rate, I have holding time, I have processing time, I have this arrival rate as the same as this arrival rate, um, this number of threads corresponds to this number of channels corresponds to this number of cores. So, there is something similar here, right? It is not that every system is different. Okay? Uh, so, the insight that allows an analytical approach is that in essence all metrics and parameters are similar and we can try and generalize this, this view, okay? which brings us to the last uh, slide here, which is that this generalized view is what is called queuing systems. It is a universal mathematical model to represent queuing for shared resources uh, and for analyzing performance of such systems. Okay? And I will be explaining what these diagrams mean in the upcoming lectures. So, from the next lecture I will introduce queuing systems and uh, the rest of the course is largely about using queuing systems to understand and carry out performance analysis. Thank you.